Okay, we're going to construct the circuit that is going to drive the solenoid, which will press the button on our Xbox 360 controller. So, we're going to start by putting our dual power supply on our board. This is 3.3 volts. This is 5 volts DC. We need the dual voltage here because our launch pad runs on 3.3 volts. Our relay runs on 5 volts. The relay is going to control 12 volts to feed the solenoid. So let's start by getting power from our supply to our microcontroller board, our launch pad. So we need 3.3 volts from here. Green, that's going to be our ground or our minus. Red is going to be a positive voltage. <clears throat> We're going to feed it in. There's two different places we can feed voltage in on the launch pad. The top pin on this row is the negative or ground. Top pin over here is positive. We also have two grounds right here and the bottom most pin being positive. I'm going to use the top pin there and the bottom pin there. This is going to be our signal from the microcontroller. It's going to tell our transistor when to switch on and switch off. I'm using port 2.5 which is the third one up from our power block. One, two, three. That is 2.5 right there. This is what's going to feed our transistor. So now we need to get our transistor on the board. This is an NPN switching transistor. This is particularly the C945. You don't have to use this one. Just about any NPN will do. I'm going to shove it in right there. I'm going to put my signal in through a resistor, because I don't want the full current of this going through my transistor. It's just a bad habit to uh, pick up. So, let's bias the base of our transistor through this resistor. We've got the resistor 2.2k ohms. That is red, red, red for the color code. So, signal comes out of the microprocessor into the resistor, through the resistor, into the base. Now, we're going to be feeding the transistor into the relay, because that's what we're going to be switching on and off. And here on our relay, we've got three little pins. This one is the signal, this one is positive, and this one is negative voltage. And this is the 5 volt relay. So positive and negative or plus and minus 5 volts. Signal is from wherever we get it. So, we're going to socket this into our board. Now, this dual power supply has both grounds connected. If not, if you're using a power supply that doesn't connect the grounds or if you're using two individual power supplies, you are going to want to run a jumper across your minus and minus rails. On mine, that's the two blue lines. They're marked minus, not the red ones, because those are plus. We don't want to make those common. Uh, so now, we are going to get voltage into our transistor. We need 5 volts in. Because 5 volts is what's going to control our relay. 5 volt signal. So we are going to feed off the red rail on the 5 volt side into our transistor. We are now going to feed the signal from the transistor out to the signal input of our relay. Our signal line comes from the transistor signal line on our relay.
Now, we need to get our 5 volts onto the coil of the relay. This is the signal that opens and shuts the switch for the coil. And now we need to energize the coil itself. So, we're going to use orange to indicate our positive voltage. So 5 volts. Five volt line, and then we're going to ground the last remaining terminal in the relay. And ground can be either side; doesn't matter. You want the blue line, the ground. I'm going here because it's going to make the shortest tangle of wire. Our solenoid and our relay both use a coil to energize and when you're switching on and off a coil the magnetic field will collapse when turned off which will induce a voltage back into the coil after it's been de-energized that's called an inductive kick and you don't want that going through your solid state components so we're going to use blocking diodes to uh, absorb that voltage now my relay here already has one right on the board. That, through the traces of the board, basically crosses the coils in a reverse bias. We're going to have to do the same thing on our solenoid. So what we need to do is we need to get 12 volts through this relay. This relay is then going to feed the solenoid. So, power turns this on. This sends a signal to switch the transistor, which is going to energize and de energize our relay, which is going to turn on and off the 12 volts, which is going to feed our solenoid. So now we need 12 volts. We're going to make a ground for the 12 volts on our breadboard. We've already used the ground rails here for another voltage supply. So I'm just going to pick an arbitrary spot on the board very last pin. This is going to be the ground for our 12 volt power supply. And we need 12 volts into our relay to come out of our relay. So let's get some voltage here. Now, this is normally closed. This is our common terminal, and this is normally open. So, when the relay is not energized, common is connected to here and will pass current through, if you connect here. We're not connecting here. When the, ener when the relay gets energized, this is no longer common to this. This one becomes common to this. So, these are the two we want to use. Let's open this one. And open this one. This is going to be our positive in from 12 volts. This is going to be our relay controlled positive 12 out, which is going to go to our solenoid. Slug these down so they don't drift all over the place. Don't make them too tight if you're using jumper plugs like I am, because you'll bend your plugs. But you do want them snug so that they're just not going to come loose on their own. So 
there we are. There's my plus. I'm going to take mine from a power adapter. Um, so what we need to do, is since we are going to be energizing and de-energizing this solenoid, we are going to need this diode to be reverse biased across our solenoid coil. We don't want voltage going through here when it energizes, otherwise we'll get a reduction in current. This won't be at full strength. But we do want the collapsing magnetic field to discharge back through here instead of feeding back through our relay and possibly into our transistor. So, this goes to the 12 volt supply. This one goes to the solenoid. I make a temporary connection just for demonstration, so I'm using alligator clips. This is going to go to ground on our 12 volts. I'm going to raise that just a little bit to get this under here for my temporary connection. And these two alligator clips are going to feed my solenoid. So what I'm going to do is connect this diode. Line, when properly forward biased on a diode, the line goes towards the negative material or ground. The end of the diode without the line typically goes to your positive. I don't want to forward bias this. I want it reverse bias, so I'm going to turn this around. So the line on the diode is going to go my positive alligator clip and the non-line I'm going to go to my negative clip these are the two leads of the solenoid, it doesn't matter which way you put this in it's not uh, voltage specific uh, either one can go either way um, So now you want to also connect these leads in where the diode is clips which is a little tricky and let's move these wires a little bit away from each other so that nothing bare touches anything bare and I put the open ends of the wiring outwards away from each other. I have a really short stub on my diode. This is one that's been recycled from another project, so I'm going to have a little bit of difficulty pinching this one on. Bear with me. Okay, there we go. Now I've got the solenoid set up. You're going to put it in a bracket, I assume, when you go to mount it on the controller, but for demonstration purposes, right now we're going to run this, um, the main circuit and the relay while none of this is connected. And I'm not hooking up my 12 volts because I don't want this jumping around on my table. But I do want to check to make sure that the relay is going to work and the controller is going to operate the transistor to trigger the relay. So. I've got myself a portable power supply here. I'm going to plug this in to my dual voltage. Turn it on. And then when we load the sketch, the sketch would actually give the instructions to signal the transistor. As you can see, I have power on my supply, power on my microcontroller, power on my relay. So all is well.